DA Jeff Rosen is in Alabama. You see him. My name is Jay Boyarski. I'm the Chief Assistant District Attorney. Standing next to me is one of our office's finest lawyers, Deputy District Attorney Louis Ramos. I know that one of the questions that you all have is what exactly was Mr. Caravallo Paranza charged with? I'm going to have Louis tell you what he's been charged with today. Good afternoon, everyone. The defendant is charged with one count of first degree murder special circumstances of burglary and mayhem, which make him eligible for life without the possibility of parole and for the death penalty. We're here today for just two reasons. The first reason is to express our deep condolences for the loss of Bambi Larson to the family of Bambi Larson. She was a beautiful, smart, loving human being. Her family misses her, and we grieve, the whole community grieves for the Larson family today. The second reason we're here is to let you know that Mr. Avalo Carranza has been charged, and he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison so that he can never hurt anyone again. Our office will hold him fully accountable for this brutal murder so that he can die in prison. Does anyone have any questions? Sir, would you consider a death penalty case if it wasn't for the governor's actions this week? The question is about Governor Newsom's actions regarding the death penalty. That's a temporary moratorium by the governor. It had no impact on any of the individual district attorney's offices, obligations or responsibilities on whether to seek the imposition of the death penalty. You will consider it? It's under consideration. As Mr. Ramos said, Avalo Carranza is charged with two special circumstances which make him eligible for the death penalty. Jay, can you address the concern about ICE notifications between the county and the jail facilities and law enforcement about suspects that may be in the custody? Len, there's a, I'm not going to do that today. There's a time and a place for politics and policy, but today we're here to express our condolences to the Larson family and to let you know that we're going to hold Mr. Carranza accountable for this murder. Those are the two reasons why we're here today. But Jay, does his undocumented, Mr. Carranza's undocumented status have any impact on this proceeding at all? I'm not going to answer questions about that today. The time will come when these questions can be answered and addressed, but today we're really here to talk about the charges and to think about Bambi Larson and what a loss it is to our community. Mr. Borski, what do you say about people who are critical of your office for giving a different standard for victims based on what you did in the San Martin rape case? Ms. Bassey, as you know, you're charged with criminal offenses by our office and it would be an ethical breach for me to have a conversation with someone who's charged with a crime here, so I can't have any conversation with you, Ms. Bassey. Can you talk about the motive in this case? We understand that he stopped Bambi for, I don't know how long, but stopped her and then followed her into her home. Did they know each other prior? What was the motive? I'm sorry, but I'm not going to get into the evidence at this point in time. That's what the courtroom will be for. So I know you're all curious about some of these things, but I'm not going to get into the evidence or the policy or the politics today. There have been questions raised about why he was on probation prior to this. Is that something where your office thinks that there was a mistake made in the justice system? This matter, this serious crime is still under investigation, and let me take this opportunity to mention the incredible work of San Jose Police Department. Chief Eddie Garcia and his men and women did an amazing job.